Honey, nature's golden treasure. This rich golden liquid has been cherished by humans for thousands of years, not only for its sweetness, but also for its medicinal properties, nutritional benefits, and cultural significance. But have you ever wondered how honey is actually made? What goes on inside a beehive? And how do we get this natural wonder from the buzzing world of bees to neatly packaged jars on store shelves? The journey of honey is one of nature's most fascinating processes, involving thousands of hard-working honeybees, meticulous beekeeping, and advanced industrial processing techniques. It all begins with forager bees collecting nectar from flowers, transforming it inside the hive into a thick golden syrup and carefully storing it in honeycombs. Once ready, skilled beekeepers carefully harvest the honeycomb frames, which are then transported to modern processing facilities. Here, cutting-edge machinery ensures the honey is extracted, filtered and packaged while preserving its natural goodness. From the delicate work of bees to the high standards of honey production, each step plays a crucial role in delivering pure, high-quality honey to consumers. In this video, we'll take an in-depth look at the entire process, how honey is made, harvested and refined, revealing the science, dedication and craftsmanship behind every drop. So sit back and get ready to explore the sweet and intricate journey of honey. The journey of honey begins in the heart of nature, where millions of flowers bloom, offering their sweet nectar to pollinators. Among these pollinators, honeybees play a vital role in both plant reproduction and honey production. But how exactly do these tiny creatures turn simple flower nectar into the golden liquid we know as honey? It all starts when a forager bee sets out in search of nectar-rich flowers. Bees have an extraordinary sense of smell, allowing them to detect floral scents from great distances. Once they find a suitable flower, such as a clover, lavender or wildflower, they extend their long tube-like tongues called proboscises deep into the flower to extract the nectar. This nectar is a sugary liquid secreted by plants to attract pollinators. Unlike water, nectar is not immediately ready to become honey. As the bee drinks the nectar, it stores it in a special internal organ called the honey sac, or crop, a separate compartment from its stomach. Here, the transformation begins. Special enzymes in the bee's body, such as invitase, start breaking down the complex sugars in the nectar into simpler sugars like glucose and fructose. This chemical reaction is crucial because it prevents crystallization and helps create honey's smooth texture. To put this into perspective, consider a worker bee visiting a lavender field. A single bee can visit up to 100 flowers in just one trip, collecting tiny droplets of nectar from each bloom. However, a bee's honey sac can only hold about 40 milligrams of nectar at a time, roughly half its body weight. Once full, the bee returns to the hive, flying at speeds of up to 15 miles per hour, navigating using the sun as a compass. This journey marks the beginning of an intricate process that ultimately leads to the honey we enjoy every day. Once back at the hive, the forager bees pass the nectar to worker bees who chew and process it further. This transformation changes the nectar into a thick, sugary liquid. To remove excess moisture, Bees fan their wings over the honeycomb, helping the liquid thicken. Once it reaches the perfect consistency, they seal the honeycomb with beeswax, storing it for later use. Once the honeycombs are filled with golden honey and sealed with a thin layer of beeswax, it's time for the beekeepers to carefully harvest this natural treasure. But removing honey from a hive isn't as simple as opening a box and taking it out. Since a colony of honeybees can contain anywhere from 20,000 to 60,000 bees, beekeepers must follow a strategic process to ensure the safety of both the bees and themselves. The first step in harvesting honey is using a bee smoker, 
a traditional tool that emits cool white smoke. But why use smoke? When bees sense smoke, they instinctively believe there is a fire nearby. This triggers their survival response, causing them to consume stored honey in case they need to abandon the hive. A well-fed bee is calmer and less likely to sting, making it safer for the beekeeper to work. For example, if a beekeeper approaches a hive without smoke, the bees may aggressively defend their home. However, with a few gentle puffs of smoke directed at the entrance and around the frames, the bees become more relaxed, allowing the beekeeper to proceed with minimal disturbance. Once the bees are calm, the beekeeper carefully removes the wooden frames from the hive. Each frame is packed with hexagonal honeycomb cells, filled with thick golden honey and sealed with a thin layer of beeswax. Since bees instinctively cling to their honeycombs, some beekeepers use a soft bee brush or an air blower to gently move the bees away without harming them. To illustrate, imagine a beekeeper working with a Langstroth hive, one of the most common beekeeping structures. This hive consists of stacked boxes containing removable frames. The beekeeper lifts each frame, inspects the honey's readiness, and places the fully capped frames into a collection container. If any frames contain uncapped honey, they are left behind so the bees can finish the process. After collecting the honey-laden frames, beekeepers transport them to a honey processing facility where modern equipment helps extract, filter, and package the honey efficiently. Depending on the scale of production, this can be a small local operation or a large industrial factory. Beekeepers carefully load the frames into specialized transport crates, ensuring the honey remains intact during transit. For example, in commercial honey production, large-scale beekeepers may harvest thousands of frames at once. These frames are then taken to a central facility equipped with automated extractors, filtration systems and quality control laboratories to ensure the honey meets industry standards before it reaches consumers. This meticulous harvesting process ensures that honey is collected safely and efficiently while protecting the bees and their environment. The next step, extracting and refining the honey to prepare it for bottling and distribution. Before extracting honey, the thin beeswax layer sealing the honeycomb is removed using a specialized tool called an uncapping knife or machine. Once the honey-filled frames arrive at the honey processing facility, the next crucial step is extracting the honey from the comb. Unlike traditional methods that involve squeezing or crushing the comb, modern factories use high-speed centrifugal extractors. These machines efficiently remove honey while preserving the structure of the honeycomb, allowing beekeepers to reuse the frames in the hive. Before the honey can be extracted, the protective beeswax layer, known as the cappings, must be removed. This thin wax seal is what bees use to store and preserve the honey inside each hexagonal cell. To do this, the frames pass through an uncapping machine, which uses heated knives or rotating blades to slice off the wax layer without damaging the comb beneath. For example, in small-scale honey processing, a beekeeper might use a manual uncapping knife, carefully scraping off the wax with a steady hand. In contrast, large industrial facilities use automated uncapping machines, which can process hundreds of frames per hour, making the process faster and more efficient. Now the uncapped frames are placed inside a centrifugal extractor, a large drum-like machine designed to extract honey using the power of centrifugal force. But how does this work? Instead of squeezing the honey out, the extractor spins the frames at high speeds, causing the honey to be flung out of the honeycomb and collected at the walls of the drum. Think of it like a washing machine in spin mode. 
Just as a washer removes excess water from clothes by spinning them rapidly, the centrifugal extractor forces the honey out of the comb without crushing or breaking the delicate wax structure. For example, a manual extractor, often used by small-scale beekeepers, requires a person to crank a handle spinning the frames inside a rotating drum. However, in large-scale honey factories, industrial extractors are fully automated and can hold hundreds of frames at a time, spinning at controlled speeds to ensure maximum honey extraction. As the honey is pulled from the comb, it flows down the extractor's walls and is collected at the bottom. From here, it passes through a fine mesh filter to remove any leftover wax particles, pollen or impurities. This ensures that the honey maintains its smooth texture before moving to the next stage of processing. One fascinating fact is that a single extraction cycle in a large factory can produce hundreds of liters of honey in just minutes making this method incredibly efficient compared to traditional honey harvesting techniques. Unlike old-fashioned methods that destroyed the honeycomb, centrifugal extraction keeps the wax structure intact. Once the honey is removed, the empty frames are returned to the beekeepers, who place them back inside the hives. This allows the bees to clean and refill the comb significantly reducing the time needed to produce the next batch of honey. This sustainable approach not only improves honey production, but also helps beekeepers maintain healthy colonies without requiring the bees to rebuild their honeycombs from scratch. The extracted honey then passes through a series of filters to remove wax particles, pollen and impurities, ensuring a smooth, pure product. Next, the honey is collected in large stainless steel tanks, where it may be heated slightly to improve its texture and prevent crystallization. However, to maintain its natural nutrients, high-quality honey is minimally processed. Before honey reaches store shelves, it must undergo strict quality control tests to ensure it meets industry standards. These tests examine the honey's moisture content, color taste, and overall purity. Key factors that determine its quality, shelf life, and nutritional value. Let's take a closer look at how experts analyze honey to guarantee it meets the highest standards. One of the most important tests is measuring the moisture content of honey. If honey contains too much water, above 18.6% according to international standards, it may ferment over time, leading to spoilage. To prevent this, honey is tested using a refractometer, a device that measures how light bends through the honey to determine its water concentration. For example, if a batch of honey has a moisture content of 17%, it's considered ideal for long-term storage. However, if the moisture level is too high, the honey may need to be gently dried using controlled heating or natural dehumidification before packaging. Honey comes in a wide range of colors, from light golden shades to deep amber tones. The color depends on the type of flowers the bees collected nectar from. For instance, acacia honey is very light, while buckwheat honey is dark and rich. To classify honey, experts use a fund color grader, which assigns a numerical value based on its hue. For example, honey classified as extra white is often mild and delicate, whereas dark amber honey tends to have a stronger, more robust flavor. This grading helps manufacturers and consumers identify different honey varieties based on their visual appeal and taste profile. Just like fine wine or gourmet coffee, honey undergoes a sensory evaluation to assess its taste and aroma. Expert honey tasters carefully analyze the sweetness, floral notes, and aftertaste to ensure that the honey meets its expected flavor profile. Each type of honey has a distinct taste. Lavender honey has a light floral essence, 
while chestnut honey has a deep, slightly bitter taste. For example, if a batch of honey tastes slightly sour or off, it may indicate fermentation or contamination. In such cases, the batch is either reprocessed or discarded to maintain quality standards. To ensure that honey is 100% pure, advanced laboratory tests are conducted to detect any unwanted additives, pesticides, or artificial sugars. Techniques like high-performance liquid chromatography can identify if any corn syrup or sugar syrup has been added, something that is strictly prohibited in high-quality honey production. For example, premium organic honey must be free of chemical residues or antibiotics, making it a preferred choice for health-conscious consumers. If a sample fails purity tests, it is removed from the supply chain and does not proceed to packaging. Once honey passes these rigorous tests, it is approved for packaging and distribution. Thanks to strict quality control measures, consumers can enjoy pure, high-quality honey with confidence, knowing that every jar meets international food safety and taste standards. Now that the honey is ready, let's explore the final step, how it's packaged and prepared for store shelves. Once approved, the honey is poured into bottles, jars, or squeeze tubes using high-speed filling machines. Labels are applied, ensuring each product meets branding and regulatory requirements. Finally, the packaged honey is boxed and shipped to supermarkets and stores worldwide, ready to be enjoyed by millions of people. From busy bees to modern factories, honey remains one of nature's purest and most cherished gifts. Whether drizzled over food or used for its health benefits, every drop carries the hard work of bees and the care of beekeepers. The next time you enjoy a spoonful of honey, remember the incredible journey it took to reach your table. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for more amazing content.